What's up, guys? guys? Back again with another video, <laughs> and today we're telling you the story of the real Jeffrey Dahmer. Yes, don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment below. Thank you. Okay, so um, I don't know if you guys know about the Netflix series. What's it called? Jeffrey Dahmer. Is it called that? <laughs> <laughs> I don't watch TV, guys. I'm gonna be honest. It's okay. it's okay, but I watched it. Um, it was pretty good. I don't know if you guys watched it. You go ahead and go ahead and do that. It's, it's really people nice. did over exaggerate about it it's not that as bad as you think like there was worse serial killers out there but it was a very bad and horrible thing that it have that happened yeah, yeah. well um the show is actually very interesting um some things they got wrong some things they did get right all right mostly everything they got right all right but there is some little things that got wrong like every horrible story, it all starts from a beginning, which would be the early childhood, childhood of uh, Jeffrey uh, Dahmer. Uh, bo, bo, bo. So according to his father, ever since he was four years old, this is where it started, four years old, he had a very bad childhood. His parents were, what, abusive? Drunk? They weren't very abusive. They were just more, they were mentally abusive. They were mentally, more mentally abusive. Mentally and abusive. And his mom was very, he was a druggie, just a druggie. Like so pills. his his mom was a drug addict who was trying to kill herself. Um, oh, a bunch failed of a lot. She failed a lot. Failed yeah. a lot and you was think in the you hospital. Would get at killing yourself. His his you dad was kind of like absent most of the time, right? Yeah, yeah. it was. Uh, it was work, work, work yeah. mostly. Yeah, work and stuff. So his strange obsession started when he was four years old. Yes. And his father was pulling dead animal bones from outside of like under the house. I guess he hunted them or something and. So yeah, he brought the dead animal bones and bam, it clicked like just like that. Yeah, he, he was it's like crazy fascinated how, with how it. much like something can change you. Yeah, yeah, he loved it's those bones. Sense. And later on, this obsession kind of grew into messing with roadkill mm -hmm. and trying to see where the bones of the animals actually came from and where they went and yeah, yeah how old they, they are and how like, they fell and what they look like and. Yeah, he liked to get dead animals, put them in jars, and uh, try to like decompose them in the jars with like chemicals. Yeah, acid. that's disgusting. Yeah, he he he. His main point was to get to the bones, basically. Mm. Yeah, and didn't he do something with his dog apparently, or or tried to? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I think I'm pretty. I'm pretty sure it was his dog, but it might have not been his dog. I don't know, but he got a hot dog. I think it was. He lured a dog into the forest behind his house. And uh, he was about to kill it, but he changed his mind at the last second. And he didn't end up killing the dog. So. Well, it was his dog. And then he ch he led him back there, and then he couldn't kill him because it was his dog, obviously. He's like, no, it's my fucking dog. Like, I can't kill him, you know? And then he What's found another dog. He found another dog. And then... And he killed that him. dog. Yeah, he killed that dog. Yeah, so he found another dog, and he decapitated it. And what well, he hung, it said he hung it from the tree. Yeah, he left it hanging on a tree, and it, uh, two kids found it. Yeah, so he he. No one, and then the other brother came. Yeah, so he killed a dog, decapitated, and left it ha nailed the body to the tree, in, and impaled the skull on a stick. Mm -hmm. And as a prank, he later invited these kids to view it, claiming that he discovered it. Yeah, what the? F All right. You know what's weird? At so, his dog in the series, you don't really see that dog like after that scene. Like you don't really see it at all in mm -hmm. any other scene. I guess because it's not really part of the story after that. It's just kind of talking about. He fucking killed it. His dog. His he own most likely dog? killed it after probably. he killed that dog. He was like, oh, he, he's probably he's probably that insane. But it didn't show that in the show, and the I show. can't really but find that's any probably information. Probably most likely happened because in the rest of the series, he didn't show the dog at all, at all. Uh, who knows what happened to his actual dog? Let's pray. Maybe for his us. mom took it. His mom went to like this work thing, and she never came back. Like she left rehab or something? Yeah, it was no, rehab, and then she volunteered there and started working there. She took his mm. little brother with her, and then. Gone. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, so basically, he started off with bones, and it just started compiling and getting worse and worse and worse, right? And then that led into. High school. High school. So what really happened at high school? So of course he was an outcast and oh by the age of fourteen he began drinking. Mm -hmm. Yes, he was a, He was a very, he was an alcoholic. Yes, he was an alcoholic. He was an alcoholic, he was. okay. Very big alcoholic. Yeah. 
he, especially in high school, a lot in high school. He drank almost. He drank almost every day, and he came to class drunk. drunk. He would bring beer into class, like a six pack of beer. He would bring it into class. Uh, he'll bring yeah. Rum, bottles of rum, yeah, but also said he was seen by staff as polite and highly intelligent yeah. with average grades. Okay, but here's the thing. You know what he did? Huh? He used to sneak in to like the you know how at the end of the year all the clubs have the photos to get in the yearbook, right? He used to sneak in to like the photos. So when he wanted to apply to colleges, he'll be like, "Oh, look it, I was in all these clubs." So he would just sneak into the room, take the picture, not actually work to be in that club. Yeah, and his friends would yeah. help him. <laughs> And then the principals found out, and they're like, how did Jeffrey Dahmer get in here? Like, how? This is impossible. He's not even in the club. You know? That's yeah, kind of smart, Yeah, he had failing grades. He failed. But, you know, that's impressive, being in every single club. What? What? <laughs> that's kind you of know? funny. He seems so pressed. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so apparently he was an outcast. Um, but he was a keen tennis player, and he played briefly in the high school band. Yes. So, yeah, he was, oh, yeah, I remember this. So, he was also a class clown, and it became known as doing a Dahmer mm -hmm. when you do something kind of, you know, goofy or off. He would just, like, go in the halls and start freaking out. That's the first time he ever did one. Mm -hmm. and he would just run he in the halls and start seizing or freaking out. Yeah, he would simulate epileptic mm -hmm. seizures and cerebral palsy at school yeah. and local stores. Oh, that's messed up. yeah. He wanted to test. And then the friends just eventually started like, oh, I'll pay you to do this and when, at this place, at this time. Yeah, you know? it said he would do that to get money to mm -hmm. purchase more alcohol. Mm -hmm. Damn. So I guess we should start Wait, with... How would he buy more alcohol if he wasn't of age? His friends worked at the store. At a store. That's the thing with getting alcohol when you're underage. It's, and it's like, at that time. It's so easy, you know? Yeah, and at that time, they didn't really ID you or... Yeah, especially if you have friends. Go ahead. You know, I see his ID, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so it, it was pretty easy just to do that. But, um, so his first murder, Stephen Hicks. Stephen Hicks? Oh, oh my goodness. If you don't know uh, about Jeffrey Dahmer before this video, he was gay. So. Yes. yes. Okay. That played a big part. So. A very huge part. Very huge part. The first murder was. Three weeks after high school graduation, it was Stephen Hicks in 1978, on June 18th. His he was planning on planning on he was planning on murdering a different guy, a whole different guy. But this was, one kind of came as a chance because mm -hmm. it was a hitchhiker. Mm -hmm. So he was. The guy came back from a festival, I think, and then Jeffrey Dahmer uh, proposed to party a little bit more with the alcohol, and the guy jumped in the car with ease. He's like, hell yeah. So, the way that he killed this unlucky soul was, basically, he took him to his house, they partied. Um, oh, by the way, oh, never mind. So, basically, the way he killed this unlucky soul was, he took him to his house, got him drunk, um, they were both drinking, he strangled him with a dumbbell bar to death, alright, then after that, he... Dragged his body to the basement. Oh, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> he dragged his body to the basement. He had uh, dissected the body. Then, uh... He, um... He, after he dissected it, he buried the remains in a shallow grave in his backyard. Oh, yeah. I got those. Right. Weeks later... I got okay. it. I'm okay. After he... And then, he... Dragged the man's dead body to his basement, dissected him, then he took the body to his backyard and buried it in a shallow grave. Waited, I think it was like a week or so, two weeks. It was like three weeks or three so. Weeks. Yeah, about. Basically, he waited for it to decompose a little bit, and he dug it up, took off the flesh all easily because it's decomposed. He uh, put it in acid and made it like basically watery, I guess. And he flushed it down the toilet after that. And he got the, all the bones from the man, crushed them with a skull chamber, and then scattered them all throughout the woods. And that's how he got rid of my guy. Dang, so he just left nothing, huh? Yeah, he left. He left powder. Bone powder. Mm -hmm. On the concrete. And he stood on top of the roof, 
and scattered them all over his lawn and in front of his yard. You know why? So he would have the feeling that he's still there. Yeah. That's why he did it. Do you guys want to see our cameraman's face right now? Yeah, we should show it. No. Ah. We'll, we'll like, we'll like scoot together. Oh my god, okay. You can be part of the podcast now. The reason why I have this is because we were supposed to go to a party. But we didn't. Because, yeah, but. The light bulb gun! And a girl. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so let's talk about what happens next. College and army. Yes. This Wait. is what he went. So he went to college. Yes. Got kicked out. Right. That's what he went to the military for. That's what he wanted to become. This? Yes. Oh, so he went to college. He enrolled at Ohio State University. And he was trying to get a major in business. Yes. Okay. He went to the military for, uh, for combat medical. To so he went to Ohio University. Wait, does that say medical? And he... Shit, I can read. <laughs> <laughs> so six weeks after he killed this guy, he went and enrolled in Ohio State University, which he did one term at before being kicked out for, you can guess, alcohol abuse. And... Yeah, so he was only successful at one course, which was rifle. Rifle. Okay, but here's another reason why he got kicked out. He was so drunk that he went to the library, stood on top of a table, pulled his pants down, and just let his, you know, swing out. And to, for everyone to see. That's another. Bro, because he was so, so drunk. There were so many warning signs about this guy, though. Yeah. It, and he crazy. went to jail so many times, so many times. And his own father was like you know this guy needs help like he's insane like he needs mental help and they didn't listen yep i mean this was the 80s all right mm -hmm. time 80s. for the middle of the podcast asking random questions all right sir how is your career going and your other uh things that you're doing in your life uh i'm just a member of the light bulb guys honestly um what about your other life your other life it's 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 going. You know what I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah, it's going. Good. Tell me what that is. The rapping. Yeah. Yeah, it's going all right. All right. But you guys know me as a likable guy, first and foremost, in a way. Will you uh, uncover the secret of your name? I'll never betray your hearts. No. Why? Because this is the light bulb, guys. Why? What? <laughs> <laughs> All right, Cameron, girl, man, whatever. Um, it's bad. Did you have the mic? <laughs> did you have the fucking mic, dude? <sighs> How's your experience? Bro, we're in 1979 already. What's your experience doing this? I love it. Why? Because it's fun. Why? Because I get to see new places. Why? <laughs> then... In general, why? <laughs> You're fucking. <laughs> Is it because it's because I'm here? You sure. Wait. <laughs> Go ahead. I said sure. Told you. <laughs> uh, life. All right. Thank you for having our middle session thing. Ask me random questions. <laughs> now, here's a question for you. Answer in the comments. Do you prefer chocolate or strawberries? Pick the right one and I might comment back. I'll comment back either way within a matter of seconds. <laughs> Anyways, it's so rare that we get comments. It's like the most precious gift in the world. It makes me grab my phone in a matter of seconds and just respond. All right, so back to Jeffrey Dahmer. Yes. So after this, he joined the army apparently. Mm -hmm. Yep, he went for combat medical. But he got kicked out. He was a 68 whiskey combat medic at Fort Sam Houston, and then he got kicked out of the military a few weeks later for what exactly? J alcohol. Oh, he was Alcohol. Oh, and hold on. 
I know something else. I know what tastes. <laughs> Sixty-eight <bad>. whiskey <laughs> getting kicked out for alcohol. The irony. <laughs> okay. Do uh, it. Do it. You don't know what. <laughs> what? Nope. Oh. Here it is. It says. Whoa. It says, <laughs> um. <laughs> Uh, this man was stealing blood and and went and then he poured it all over himself one time. Wait, wait, wait. And, and after that's that, he went into medical. And that's a, a, after that, they're like, that's the last straw, man. You're from you, we are get out. <laughs> yeah, so he got kicked out of the military and um, tried to rape um, a guy. But he became a phlebotomist after that. I, for, I forgot. Milwaukee no. Blood Plasma Center, where Dahmer worked as a phlebotomist. Oh yeah, because he was like. I'm qualified because I went to the army for, you know, medical. So, before getting kicked out of the military for raping There's a guy. <laughs> trying to rape a guy. <laughs> yeah, he tri he did that drug thing that he was doing with most, you know, the other guy. He was stole drugs from the... No, this is med the first bay, time, med actually, bay. he did this. Med bay. Yeah, he stole drugs. From the med bay. And from learning classes that he took in the military to become... A medical, you know, worker. So, he got those drugs, put them in that guy's drink, you know, invite him, you know, let's party, let's have a few drinks, right? So, he put it in his drink and then try to, you know, oh, take photos and, yeah, and, yeah. So, he okay, did that. So, yeah, he did, also stealing blood. He did that. And mid that, his parents got divorced in yeah. 1978, and yeah. his mom was still trying to kill herself, apparently. Yeah. Mm -hmm. for when, that's when he for first attention, met by the way. his mm -hmm. stepmom when he got kicked out. Alright, okay, so yeah, he got kicked out after trying to rape a guy and stealing drugs from training. And then he went to work at, uh, as a phlebotomist because he said he had experiment experience at the Milwaukee Blood Plasma Center. And this is kind of where his cannibalism kind of began to start. Yeah, he would but... bathe in the blood, right? Like rub it all over himself. Yeah, he would get blood bags. He would drink it. Rip them open would... and just like pour it all over him. Like... He would drink it, like, ugh. Yeah, and uh, they saw this, and they're like, uh, no. Yeah, no, like, this is not okay. Yeah, so they kicked him out. So he got kicked out of that, and then he worked at a chocolate factory. Uh-huh. And he kept one of his victim's heads in his locker? Oh, yeah. Bruh. Did people yeah. see this? No, but they smelt it. That's how they smelt it, and they're like, "Oh, it's cool. He's just dirty. He just stank, bro." <laughs> I don't know. I don't know how this they can know this. They're, they're like, "This man needs hygiene." No, <gasps> apparently. <laughs> All right, and she's here. She just popped in out of nowhere, by the way. Everybody, clap, 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 clap your hand. You gotta clap. Bro. I'm. All right, this is our information person. Go ahead, talk. So this later on in 1981, yeah. um, Jeffrey Dahmer killed a guy named Tony Hawk. He was a pro skater and he was deaf. Tony Hawk? Really? No. <laughs> hugs. Tony hugs. hugs. Go ahead, hugs. Madison. Go ahead. All right, talk about it. Go you, ahead. Know, you know about Tony. No, I have to get his name right. Oh. Okay, basically his name is Tony... His name is Tony and he's no, dead. No, hold up, hold up, hold up. He's a very, very attractive male. Where's his name? Are you gay? What? That's what it says. Oh. Hughes? Tony Hughes? Hughes? Tony Hughes. Hughes, okay. Tony Hughes. <laughs> Tony, what did you you say? sounded so like offended. This is like a <laughs> the basic worry. You're ass like name, bro. Like, Tony Hughes. <laughs> this is like a basic name. What are you talking about, Tony Hugs? What? I thought it was gonna be like H U G G, like Huggies or something. Like. <laughs> no. Okay. So. Uh, oh, Tony stinky. Hugs. And poopy. <laughs> You're like that toy in Walmart when you walk past the aisle and it's all. Pee pee in the body. <laughs> oh, and it's a giraffe, and the neck starts going like this. Yeah, go grab it. They just do the whoosh. Okay, on the so toilet. Tony hugs. <laughs> hugs. Hughes. 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 Jill Brown. Hughes. Tony Hughes. Basically, he was dead. <laughs> 
Bob. You saw. <laughs> Bro, you're a cadet, what? <laughs> This dude, look at this cadet, bro. Dance, huh? I said that's how I could do it. Ah, right. Hey! Shit! Bro, tell me why every since I got in there, when I walk, I feel like I have to march. And when I stand, I feel like I have to stand at attention now. Oh. Anyway. Tony, Anyways. who now? Tony Hughes. That was the name of the death person that he killed. Very unfortunate soul. Sorry to him. Um, go ahead and explain why. Uh, they met at a uh, gay club. These lights are hot. And they both thought each other was attractive. But the way they communicated was on a notepad. And at first he was like, like you don't talk you know you don't talk very much you know whatever but then he realized he was dead because he started writing on a notepad um oh and then they you know started to get closer and even more closer and then he had to of course go to college and start going to school yep and as soon as he got a break he went to go see um jeffrey Dahmer, and Meanwhile, you know, this whole time is passing, so the break is ending. And once the break ends, he obviously, is ha you know, has to go back to school. And Jeffrey Dahmer's like, no. Like, I don't want you to leave. You know, like, I fuck, like, you, you, my, you know, everything. Like, you can't leave me. You're the only thing I have. And. He fucking killed him. Yeah. <laughs> he, well, not at first. He was gonna let it. He actually let him let leave at first, but then he came back because he forgot his keys. Boy, and then he was like, "No, I can't let him leave." He's like, "Bro, so he what camera is this?" Bashed him in the head. Yep, and he and ended up. Yeah. He, and it just kept going. So remember, if you have an insane boyfriend who has an obsession with blood, guts, and abandonment issues, don't ever forget your keys. Yeah. So we'll just. Let's just skip to the end and say... That's very sad, He though, didn't go honestly. back to school. Yeah. And yeah. Jeffrey Dahmer got to have his love with him forever. Yeah, and his mom's like, well, you know, where did my son go? And he's like... I don't fucking know now. Did he make up an... He made up an excuse, right? Like, oh, he went back to school and, like, I didn't see him? Yeah. Yeah, basically, like, so... Last time I saw him, he left and... He, he told me he was going back to school. And that's for this, so uh, I'm going to poof her out real quick. And... Ow! Good. She's gone. I'm back. Okay, so... That's it. I can't be the good one anymore. I'm going to more killings. A few more killings, yes. Four, to be yes. exact. Yes, one of them was a child, a 14-year-old boy. Yes. That sucks. One of the last ones. Yeah, um, the, he and went to a gay bar, right? He, and, uh, he saw this black male, that's usually who he targeted, by the way, black males. Um, and well, they start, the 14-year-old kid was Asian. I know. And so, that's why I said usually. So, he got attracted to this hunky man I guess and uh he invited him over to his place and the guy was feeling him he's like I I got this right so they end up going to his house the guy was a little skeptical at first cause like he got in his house and it kinda looked it smelled and like it was just like I think I don't know by the way when this guy walked in there was like a bloody I think it was a bloody knife on the counter but I'm not sure mm -hmm. but the guy didn't see it I'm just, I'm just gonna say that he didn't see it <laughs> um so he was getting them beer. He poured it in cups. He did put a little something in the guy's beer, and uh, the beer actually uh, fizzed up a lot from the chemicals he put in there. And the black guy was skeptical about it. He looked at it and he's like, "Damn, that's a lot of that's a lot of bubbles for a, you just poured a beer." He's like, oh, I just shook I shook the can a little bit. I guess he made a, he made up an excuse." And then after that, it worked. Yeah. After that, he was at, he was he started ranting to him, talking and stuff, and the guy got a little weird out, and he's like, ah, I think I'm gonna leave. 
So he tries to leave, and you know Jeffrey, you know, not like that. <laughs> so uh, well, he's like, he no. Try, didn't you try to like bondage him type situation? Yeah, he was he like, did. I don't want you to leave. Please don't leave me. Yeah, so <laughs> he um, got him in the house. I think he got a, a giant. I think he, I okay. I don't know what happened after that, but and no, he hid the giant bloody knife. Skip ahead a little bit, like a couple minutes. They're on his bed. The guy's crying on the bed, and Jeffy Dahmer is in fr standing in front of him. He just put on a tape of, uh, I think it was a movie. Oh, what, what, what? Was it a movie he put on? Or was it a tape of him? It was the movie that he puts on for all of his lover victims that they watch together. Yeah, and he had a giant, like, yeah, he was like in his hand. Always oh, a giant knife. I don't I know. Just want to show you. And then uh, the guy is just sitting there all uncomfortable, like thinking, oh shit, what the fuck's gonna happen? Am I gonna die? I mean, wouldn't you be uncomfortable if someone has a knife next to you just chilling and like, yeah. let's watch a movie? So, they're watching a the movie, they end up laying down, and Jeffrey Dahmer's about to rape this man. Nah, check me out, bro. Suck this. Suck this. this. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> wow. They're laying down on the bed, the guy's crying, Jeffrey Dahmer's rubbing his chest, touching his ding ding, you know how it is. <laughs> and... I you know, know how it is, we've all done it, you know? I don't know how it happens. <laughs> what you like that? <laughs> oh, ding ding, oh, yeah. you know? He gets, he gets the handcuffs on this man. I think he's about to kill him. And the man somehow, like, hits him and he falls to the ground. The guy dips. Um, he, he gets he out. Gets he gets out. He starts... Dipping hella hard down the street, cops. Like, help. Yeah, but he Wait, had before, on, before we get to that point, because the guy actually said this later. So they were about to get freaky. What he said is, he said when he got on top of me, I looked at him and I saw the face of the devil. That's what he said. The victim. No joke. Damn. Okay, go ahead. Well. Black man running down the street with handcuffs on doesn't really look good. So, uh, in this era, by the way, in this era, mm -hmm. yeah. um, the cops they put he found a cop car, they pulled over, they jumped out the car, and they pulled two pistols on him. They're like, Hey, stay there because this man has handcuffs on him, and they don't know what the hell's going on. And the guy starts saying, like, he's all scared and stuff. He's like, They he brought him back to a serial killer's house, like, literally. They brought him back to the house that he was yeah. trying to get, like, the, like, Jeffrey Dahmer was trying to murder him. Yeah, he's like, they brought him back. he tried to kill me, he tried to rape me, there's a bunch of dead bodies and stuff in his in his house, like, because those skulls. Yeah, that's that's how he got caught. He had those yeah. skulls in his room that he had the guy in, and, by the way, Jeffrey Dahmer was, like, grabbing stuff out of his, uh, uh, what's it called? Dresser, and I think the black guy saw some of the pictures he had in there, which were pictures of the like, dead people he killed like, with their heads cut off and stuff yeah and the pictures of them just laying there and that and he freaked Guys. out shut the fuck up okay all right so um at the <laughs> so the guy is all screaming he's like yo help me this guy this white man just tried to kill me and then the cops are a little skeptical because, like I said, this era, cops didn't really like black people. Mid-90s. Yeah. So, they grab the guy, put him in the cop car, and they take him back to Jeffrey Dahmer's house. They, they ask him, hey, where does this man live? We gotta, we're gonna check it out. So, instead of leaving him in the car, they decide to take him with them upstairs to his house. Bro, I would be mortified. I don't know why, like, this man was just crying in front of, a grown man was just crying in front of you, <laughs> because this man just tried to kill him, you gotta bring him back to his apartment. So, they get to his apartment, they knock on the door, he answers, he's like, yo, what's up? And, they're like, hey, could we come in? And he's like, uh, I don't know about that, and he's like, kind of skeptical, and they're like, yeah, we insist. And, so, he closes the door, he unlocks it, they walk in, they're looking around, it smells, of course, because... Yeah, and before this lady, her na their, his neighbor actually was complaining about the smell. Yeah. Calling the cops over and over and over and like, and hey, the smell. Like, I literally hear him chopping up the bodies. Like, I, you can smell them. Like, what? You know? But because of her skin color, She's you're like. She was black, yes. They didn't get No. Him. Like, he's white, you know? Like, no, 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 no. Yeah. 
There was so many instances before that this could have been prevented. This, it's yeah. because... Okay, I'm just gonna say it was because they were racist. racist. Yeah. Like, uh, it just makes me a little angry how, like, they, th they thought like that back then and they could have stopped so many crimes. But just because they thought uh, people's skin colors made them bad or, like, unlooked. It just sucks, but that's the world we live in. So, after he opens the door, they walk in. It smells bad, like hella bad. And they're looking around, they're like, alright. Uh, they're kind of a little creeped out. They're like, alright. He's like standing there, just like letting them look around. He looks a little nervous. Um, they want to go in his room, but he's like, he doesn't let them at first. He's like, ah, no, basically. Um, but they insist, and they're the cops. What does he need to do? They have guns. So, he stepped aside. They went in the room. Um, at first, they saw the bloody bed. There was blood on the bed, and they're like, okay. They didn't, like, arrest them right th there. They're like, they're looking around. They thought it was weird. They're like, all right, there's blood on the bed. It's a weird sign, but I guess it's yeah, not but it, it's, it's, it could have been from something else. So, they're like, they're, they ignore it. They're looking around. I see a giant barrel in the corner. The barrel smells horrible. They're like... They're looking at it and they're like, ugh. And, and this is when they started to realize kind of what was going on. Yeah. yeah. And, the, was, and then one cop looked in the drawer next to the bloody stain. Yes. And, and there was all the found, pictures. Yeah, he found all those pictures. And he grabbed them, looked at them. He's like, oh, shit. He's like, I feel oh. bad for that And just guy, dropped dude. them. And just like, oh. And then there's bloody wet. I think there was bloody knives on the floor, but I'm not sure. Although it was just No, like, they were in the closet. Yeah. Oh, in the closet. Okay. And uh, he had skulls of people he killed on his on his like dresser. Or the, yeah. Yeah. And, and they saw yeah. those two. They look at him. He sees that they see it, and the, he's fucking. He dips, and they tackle him. They they put handcuffs on him. And the black guy outside, he I think he's like, he got. He was less scared after that. We just said. Yeah, he was. He like, was like, all right. He was just like. <sighs> he's like. Good. Like you motherfucker, I hope you brought in hell and like all this other stuff. And then the the her the neighbor was like, I freaking told you, you know, like mm -hmm. I told you all this time. He, they they took him outside. There was an ambulance. There was a lot of paparazzi, and they're all taking pictures of him. And there's a news person there. He gets in the car. Um, they basically shut down the whole place. And then I think they kick out a bunch of people. Yeah, they all have to go to, like, this hotel. Yeah, they all kicked them out. And then after all this happened, they destroyed the building. They they destroyed it. So everybody had to remove. Everybody had to move somewhere else, basically. And so, yeah, that's when he got caught. Yeah, I mean, they couldn't really keep the building. Let's be honest. <laughs> <laughs> There's a little too much went on there. So, let's talk about him and the trial and him going the to The arrest the and death. his death. Yes. All right, he got arrested. He was being processed. There were, there were um, uh, what's it called? They had a, they were uh, questioning him. That's what it's called. They were questioning. Him. He was in the room. I don't. Did he uh, confess to everything? Um, actually, yeah. He just started, you know. Oh yeah. He started talking. He's like, bro, I did this. I did that. This is how many people are killed. They they started pulling. With no remorse. No just remorse. no remorse. Yeah, just, I like, mean not just that though. He like you know everything they saw. He knew he knew his car. Like yeah, knew, like yeah. What what did he say? Stupid. I mean, look how long he got away with it. Mm -hmm. And you know, and he killed like people in his own grandmother's house. Like that's that's wrong, mm -hmm. you know. In his in her basement. It was. It his was grandma, like, like passed and away. Yeah, no, actually, um, it he got so bad to the point where like n the military didn't help. You know, going to college didn't help. You know, he was already alcoholic. Like all these things. You know, obviously, and then he's they sent him to his grand his grandma's to help her, and then started killing people. That's he like, what, his grandma. No, but when. You know, they came back and trying to look for the bodies because he's like telling him, you know, where all the bodies are. Yeah. She's like, what? Like, you know, like she doesn't know where she is. Like she has freaking dementia. And she's like, what is going on? Oh. Who are these people? Like who like, because all these cops are in the house, like, you know, investigating everything because obviously there's dead bodies everywhere. So yeah. she's like, oh, my God, you know what's going on? So, and then so she had the dad gets she there. Had no clue what yeah, was and on. she was like, the dad gets there. And he's like, oh my God, this is my mom's house. Like, what are you doing? You know, like, 
obviously, like, she, what the hell are you? This is an old lady. She has no idea who the hell you are. She, she can barely remember you know me. Like, what the fuck? And so she took her. He took her upstairs and started playing solitaire with her. Yeah. <laughs> While all this is happening downstairs she, in the basement. She forgot. Chair. She's like, oh, playing solitaire. Yeah. 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 So he, he did all this with his demented grandmother in the house. Wow, mm. okay. I, I had no clue of that till just now. Yeah, so, I forgot about that, sorry. Yeah. No, I didn't even well, research that. Well, during the investigation, they were questioning him. He had confessed <clears throat> everything. He didn't really have any remorse in his, like, eyes. He didn't really talk with remorse, nothing. He just stood up, confessed to all of it. He told him all the details. And didn't cry once, just like. Didn't at one point accepted. they ask him why he did all that? Yeah. And he what did he say about it? Nothing. Well, after that he went to court, basically. Did he? But he always knew he liked the, the like the inside of people and yeah. There's also, there's actually um, a name for that. I forgot what it's called. But um, yeah. Did he plead insanity? He tried to. Well, he did. But that didn't... It didn't work? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, he got life in prison. Uh, I don't think they gave him a death penalty. Um, no. Just life in prison. Yeah, they gave him... Just, just life, life in life. prison. Just life in prison. So, he was in prison. Oh, wait. It sorry. was actually like 200-something 200, 200 years. I yeah, well, I believe in Ohio you can't get the death penalty, right? No. Yeah. I think it's illegal. I so, skipped, that's I skipped, why. But they gave I skipped, him... Yeah, they gave him like 200-something years. <laughs> I skipped a couple things. Sorry. In the show, um, it shows him in the courtroom with his glasses on. Oh, yeah. But in real life, he actually did not have his glasses on. And I'm pretty sure this is why. No, I, it is. It, it is. is why? Yeah. Yeah. Is. But he didn't want to see the victim's families. So that's why he didn't have his glasses on. Mm -hmm. And a lot he of people... He said he didn't want to see the faces of the victim's family. He got, a lot of people got pressed because of that. But, but, man, but many and people... And one of the... One of the oh. It's weird because many people who, like, knew him and stuff called him a sociopath. Mm -hmm. Even though, like, he didn't want to see the victim's family. I don't know. I just think that's yeah, a weird thing to add. On here's here. the thing. Another... In the courtrooms... The, you know, um, Tony, her mo his mom, the, the death guy, uh, started freaking out on him. Like, oh no, his sister. He was like, you want to see crazy? Like, I'll show you crazy. And just started, you know, wanted to go fucking off on him. Like, beat his ass, bro. And then, you know, obviously the Security. cops caught him. Yeah. But held her back. But he almost, whoo, you know, and they were right there. <laughs> but yeah, after the court, they found him guilty. He went to prison. This is where this man's life changes, apparently, for him. Okay, he, he's... All right, let's see how many years he technically Changes, has. ends. It changes for good, and it ends. He found good. God. Yeah. He found he was God. He, God. He, he was heavily into this. He carried a Bible with him a lot. He got 16 life imprisonments. I think one life sentence for each person. Yeah. He got 16 life sentences and a few more years for the attempted murder. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, he's heavily into God. He's going to, like, anger management. He's doing all this other stuff. Like, or so he said. Yeah, he goes He goes to church. And then people are making, at this time, people are sending him money. People are yeah, making, yeah, fan mail. Yeah, people fan are, are mail. making comic books about this man. People are loving him. They're fucking, there's girls fucking sending him love letters. Yeah, they're like, money. I'm pregnant with your kids. And like, you know, yeah, and I like, want, you know, you're my everything. And like, and the I want to get pregnant. The family see this and they get a little greedy with it. They're like, hey, yo, we want some of this money he's getting. No, it's because it's not fair for the dad to get all the money. Like, they're literally the victim's family and they don't get one cent. Exactly. That's so unfair. So they're trying to get money. And that, that that doesn't happen apparently. Yeah, it does they they get their money? They, they do? get their share. Every single every single family of the victims, they get money. So the, the actually the father didn't get very much at all. But um, the, okay, the thing now the, this this is weird. But I'm just gonna explain it so people know. Because <laughs> the father wrote a book, by the way. That's if you guys are wondering. That's what the guy. That's what the yeah. I was about to mention that. Yeah. No, but as as far as the the getting fan mail and stuff. That's happened with pretty much. You're gonna every, notice every that as a trend. Killer. Every ser serial yeah. killer, anybody who's murdered anybody, they have all these fans mm -hmm. because they're actually uh, girls and guys. But it's it's literally like some sick, twisted fetish, like murderers, yeah. like people who have 
taking lives and have like these mental illnesses. There are people who are into that, and it's it's strange. But what that that's gonna happen with every serial killer in this series. So you're just gonna notice that. Just yeah. putting that out there ahead of time. And so let's talk about his falling. All right. So this man had a clean. He had duties. He had a clean job. Uh, he had a job in prison. Yeah, he had a work clean. Details. Yeah. He had a clean uh, this workout area slash shower area. Um, he had his partner with him. It was this other guy. I think he was in there for killing his wife. I think he smashed her head in with like something. I don't know. But he killed his wife. A lot and of people be smashing head ins anyway. And it's easy. They're cleaning. And then this. I I think he's a, a psychopath. Um, this black male. He uh, he has a history of killing inmates, uh, but he likes to say that it's God's work. Like God speaks to him and says, "Hey, yo, go kill this man," and he does it. So they get this man, the guards, and they're like, "Hey, you have work to do." So they take him out and they put him in the same room as Jeffrey Dahmer and this man that killed his wife. And there's three people in the room. Yeah, there's three there's people. The guard leaves. He leaves them unattended. And I don't know where the I don't know where he goes. I think he goes in the hall or something. Well, he leaves leaves these three inmates in this room alone, unattended. Where and it wasn't his knowledge that this black male was kind of a sociopath. Um, Makes sense. Yeah, the black man goes, and I don't know his name. That's why I'm saying black male. By the way, I'm not trying to be racist. I just. When did he say this though? What? At some point, he said, "Tough times don't last. Tough people do." Oh, when he was about to kill. Ah. Oh, so. Um, instead of I'll, I'll I'll stop saying black male. I'll just say character three. How about that? How about you say Scarver? Okay, Scarver <coughs> went into the bathrooms to clean them with Jesse Anderson and Jeffrey Dahmer. No, Jeffrey Dahmer was not in the shower with them. He was cleaning the dumbbells and stuff at this time. And you just hear a loud bah, and you hear something fall to the ground. No. They were, you can hear them like... Oh, yeah. You can hear them rustle around a little yeah. bit. The guy's struggling. And then you just hear nothing, and then you hear someone fall. Yeah. And the guy comes around the corner with the broomstick he had, and it was snapped in half, and it was bloody. So he basically shanked the guy. He killed him, and Jeffrey Dahmer was like, yo, why'd you just kill him? What happened? He's like, relax, that man killed his wife. He basically, he's like, I did God's work, basically. And then he's like, whoa, what are you going to do to me? <laughs> the guy gets closer. He basically, he, him and Jeffrey Dahmer just like, uh, they like rustle around a little bit. Like they're fighting. They're like, yo, get, like he's trying to get him off of him. And then he ends up on top of Dahmer. And uh, he has a, a dumbbell. He has like the hand. He has the the metal. The metal rod that you yeah. use for dumbbells or barbells. Yeah, he yeah, has that in his hand. And Jeffrey Dahmer, he knows he's all in the god at this point. He just accepts what he 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 like. He's like, yo, this is God's fate. I guess it, this is gonna happen. This is gonna happen. And he like, he's like, and he's talking to him, and he's like, go ahead. Yep. And then the guy who's about to kill him says. Tough times don't last. Tough people do, and you're the toughest kid I know. Hey, man. Bop, bop, bop. I smashed his head in. All right. I'm now, let's talking... talk about the irony about this. What's, what's, okay. So. The first kill Jeffy Dahmer has ever had for a human, he strangled him with a dumbbell bar. And the thing that killed Jeffy Dahmer was a dumbbell bar. It started with a dumbbell bar and it ended with a dumbbell bar. Yep. That's, that's, yeah. So, that's pretty much the real story of Jeffrey Dahmer. Yeah. And it ends there. And it ends there. That was just a rough draft, by the way. If you want to, like, <sighs> if you want to, like, go more detailed into it, maybe we can make a part two. What's set a goal? How about 30 likes, if you want a part two of Jeffrey Dahmer? But. Okay. I'll take it. But next we're doing on this podcast, next we're doing on Sarah Killer's podcast, our Light at Night podcast. What is it called? They Sarah don't see much Light at Night. Cause they don't Sarah Killer's and Light at Night? Mm -hmm. uh, we, need to, we should make like a totally different name. 
No, I like that. Light at night? Yeah. yeah. Alright, well. So, okay. Well, for, our, our, for Light at Night no, Serial Killer this, Series Part 2. I got this, I got this, I got this. What do you mean Part 2? Well, we're gonna make. This Part 1. I know, we're gonna. It's gonna be a series. Alright, let me, let me see something. Let me see something. He's for, a little out of the loop. For Light at uh, If you guys want more content for Light at Night Serial Killer Edition, um, Part 2 would be on our old friend. Well, not an old friend, but you know him is. Say his name. Oh, <laughs> John Wayne Gacy. That's what we're doing next, and I'm uh, gonna be honest with you guys. I didn't know a lot about Jeffrey Dahmer, and I didn't watch the show. I did. I did. All right. You can slaughter me all you want in the comments. Go ahead, but I didn't watch it. But if you guys are excited for John Wayne Gacy, please comment down below and tell us. John Wayne Gacy, I, I know everything about. I'm excited for it. I it's really like a great him. episode. He's, he's a really, I, I like I like reading up on this man. I've watched a couple videos on him. I've read about it. I'm like, this one's interesting. So, so if you want more content like this, let us know in the comments. He stood up right there. <laughs> Say something. <laughs> So we can keep doing this content <laughs> for you. Oh, no. And don't forget to like, like button, subscribe, subscribe button, comment down below. I don't know if there's anything for that. And don't forget we're the light bulb guys. Share with your friends about this content. Alright, so thank you guys for watching the video. And don't forget. Don't, Don't live, live in the, the dark, dark the, the light bulb, bulb guys. guys.